Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some fascinating articles. First, we're going to take a little rewind and talk again about the crypto exchange Kraken gets a Wyoming banking license. And there are some subtle nuances that we really need to go over because this, I think, is going to change a lot of people's minds also. On top of that bank story, U.S. banks can hold reserves for stable coins, says the office of the OCC. And finally, we're going to go into what I think is one of the biggest articles. Bitcoin ATM surpass 10,100 worldwide expert shares industry outlook. And I have to believe that this might be a pretty good business opportunity. And I'll tell you why. Before we do that, let's get into the sea of red. It is September 22nd. It is Tuesday. It's about 1 p.m. Texas time. Well, let's see how far we've fallen. Bitcoin, actually not too bad, 10.5, and it's up 0.1%, uh, only one only one and a half for the, for the week, so not too bad. Uh, Ethereum, still bouncing around 340. I can see 350, not too, not too far away. Tether's Tether, uh, at 15 billion market cap, the exact same. Uh, XRP, 23 cents, watch out. Bitcoin Cash in that number five spot. I wonder what's going to happen with that hard fork because it's going to come up on November 15th. Bitcoin Cash, uh, the, the BCH crew versus the ABC and all the different miners that uh, they might allocate 8% as a tax to them. So we'll see what happens. I think uh, Bitcoin Cash will, will come out uh, on that one, but uh, who knows? So if you're holding Bitcoin Cash, be prepared. You might have uh, a little fork action. Polkadot, number six spot, up 1.2%, but only $4. Binance coin, wow, making a little surge at seven. And uh, Chainlink, wah, 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 883. What are you gonna do? Uh, keep going down. Cardano's up a little bit, that's not too bad. Let's see, Monero of 5%, that's weird. Maybe there is some kind of new announcement or something, I have no idea. Tezos, 7.8, that's interesting. 10.6, uh, urine finance, 25,000. I think urine is a good project. I just don't want to go into DeFi. I mean, if anything's the mo if anything's unstable, it is DeFi right now. And I'll just uh, sit on the sidelines, see what happens, and uh, go from there. Where is... Ah, here it is, Uniswap. Uh, looks like it's down 5% for the 24 hours at 424. Not too bad. So if you're holding Uniswap, uh, hey, you could have sold out at $8, but uh, it's hard to time the top. All right. That's what's going on in the market. Let's get into today's big stories. So today I want to do a little something different. Um, I want to rewind and go back to an article that we had talked about previously, uh, about a week or so ago. And this was about the Kraken Exchange getting a Wyoming banking license. And we had talked about how this was going to be big. There's some subtle nuances I wanted to go over. Uh, after I talked to my wife, she was the one that spurred this whole thing on. So what's happening? Just to recap, the crypto exchange Kraken last week obtained a special purpose depository institution license from Wyoming to become the first licensed bank to provide deposit taking, custody, and fiduciary services for digital assets, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that good stuff. Fantastic. And crypto, uh, Kraken did a pretty smart thing. In 2015, they said, hey, New York, we're out of here because you're bit licensed. I got to jump through too many hoops to do it. So I'm out. And uh, they didn't need them. Kraken will maintain its headquarters in San Francisco, but a subsidiary, Kraken Financial, will be based in Cheyenne and act as a bridge between digital assets and fiat currency, which is fantastic. That is the whole uh, crux. That is the whole excitement. They're going to have that little uh, exchange right there where you can put your money into, business can put their money into, you can put your money into it, and you can do anything you want to. You can buy cryptocurrency, you can sell cryptocurrency, you can actually use cryptocurrency to buy things on your debit card. Well, hopefully that'll come out uh, later, but it's gonna be a great thing. But here's where it gets good. Deposits will not be insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp or FDIC. Why is that good? It's good because, because they're not going to insure them, Kraken will be required to maintain 100% reserves against all deposits. I'm going to get into that in Q of the day in a bit. However, the FDIC typically only insures up to 250000 So if Kraken has, or if Kraken has a, a bunch of uh, big players in the game, 250000 gets eaten up pretty quickly, so it doesn't matter. Kraken will only offer accounts to U.S. residents, but the exchange plans to expand to a global clientele. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. If, <laughs> if uh, they open up globally, uh, how far away do you think they are for an IPO? Just a question. How far away do you think Kraken is before an IPO? I think it's right around the corner. Anyhow, it would offer digital asset custody, demand deposit accounts, and wire transfer and funding services in its first year. 
but plans a suite of mobile and online banking products, debit card, and other functions. So great. So what I want to do is I want to jump, I want to start with, with, with Q of the day because there's just some questions that my wife asked me, which I think there may be other people out there that have the same questions that I think should be answered now because this really is a bigger deal than what I had originally thought when I did my research. Let's, let's jump right in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the office. So uh, Q of the day, like the article we are just going over, uh, came from my wife today. Uh, we were sitting on the patio, just having a quick lunch, and uh, she had just, uh, we were talking about cryptocurrency digital assets. Actually, I was talking and she was listening, which is usually how it works out because I'm talking nonstop about this, as I'm sure maybe somebody like uh, yourself might be doing the same thing to your friends and family, <laughs> where you're just talking like, would you please stop? But uh, so we're talking about the different things that are going on uh, in this space. And one of the things that I talked about was, hey, there's going to be a new, uh, there's, there's a banking license that has been given to a uh, pretty large exchange called Kraken. It's going to be based out of Wyoming, the thing we just talked about. And she goes, who cares? She's like, so, I mean, why is that a big deal? There's a new bank opening up down the street. And, uh, you know, that's not really a big thing that you're talking about. And uh, there's banks that open up all the time. So what's the difference between this one? And I thought about it, I go, you know, that is one of the problems that I see with this, sh with this channel as new people come in is that they don't, they're not really well, well versed in how everything works out in the, in the uh, financial world. And I have to be honest with you, when I started this channel, I was the exact same way because I was just like a bank is just there for me to deposit my money so I can get it out and I can pay my, my uh, debtors and, and my employees and everybody else that I need to for my, my business. I don't really care. I'll jump to the hoops because I don't have time to deal with this stuff. However, as time has gone on, I'm like, gosh, I really got to do some more things here because uh, these banks are just screwing me over, left and right. And that's the thing. Banks are, I mean, look, the people that work in the banks, some of them, you know, are great. You know, I, that's just it. Like I, I've had people in the comment section like, hey, I work at a bank. I'm not a bad person. I get it, right? But they're just the upper echelon and some people in the banks, just like everywhere else that you go, there's just bad people out there. And those are the people that are responsible for those trillions of dollars that uh, they just got busted for, for laundering money to um, the cartels and uh, the murderers and, you know, uh, drug trafficking and things like that. So, yeah, those are bad people. But um, when we're talking about uh, the actual, you know, banking license and, and what this means, um, banks make a lot of money off you and me. One great way that they, they've done this for a long time, which is fractional reserve lending, right? So I'll put 100 bucks in the bank and they'll say, thanks, Rob. And they'll say, Jim, come on in. Here's 100 bucks. And uh, it'll just keep going on and on and on because that's exactly what fractional reserve lending is. They just kind of just give away your money. They lend it out at a percentage. So really they're doing absolutely nothing. They're just kind of sitting back and going, thanks. Um, if 1% of us, maybe 5%, I don't, I don't know the exact number, went to all of our banks right now, like just, let's just say 5% of the, of the people in the United States, 5% of people went to the banks, I want my money right now. There's no way they could do it because they have created so much debt They've created so much lending that they just can't get all that money back because it is just based on a digital ledger and a centralized ledger somewhere in their bank. And that is one of the problems. So when we see that this new banking license comes into play, um, Kraken can't do that. Kraken, it is the reserve bank has said specifically, you must have 100% of reserves in your bank. So if someone deposits one Bitcoin, uh, you can't lend out that one Bitcoin like a Wells Fargo can, like a JP Morgan can lend out fiat money. You just can't do that. We're not, we're not going to allow that. We're going to allow you to have your banking license, but we're not going to allow you to do this specific part, which makes the other banks a ton of money um, because we're just not going to allow it, which is the most fantastic thing ever, right? Because that was one of the things people were saying, well, if they do that, then we'll just have a bunch of, you know, uh, paper Bitcoin and it'll become worthless. Well, that can't happen. So, I think with this, it becomes a more transparent, a just much better banking system. And I can see this uh, paying dividends way down the line. Now, another question that my wife had was, well, how are they going to make money? Because if banks, that's all they do is, is lend. Well, how does that actually work for them actually making money? So it's the same type of thing, right? I mean, they're still going to get paid for their transaction fees, just like they are on Kraken, the, the regular exchange that you go to right now, which I got to tell you, I just updated the, um, uh, my exchange and wallet spreadsheet, which is all the ones that I've ever gone through and, and actually use and recommend. If you're looking for just a recommendation, there is a link in the description of every one of my videos. It looks exactly like this. 
And when you click on that, it goes over all the different exchanges of wallets I have, recommend them, all the, all the fee structures and everything else. Also, there's affiliate links. Uh, if you use them, they, you can get between $10 and $25 if you sign up for whichever one that you want to. Not all of them, they all vary. Uh, you don't have to use the affiliate links. You can go right to uh, Kraken or right to uh, Coinbase or right to Voyager. But if you use the, the links, it gives you a little bit, of, so it's up to you. Kraken is going to be able to do the number one thing that we all wanted to do which is to store and custody our cryptocurrency to be able to spend and use our cryptocurrency or our fiat and just make it a nice blended uh, experience. So another thing that I was thinking about, you know, like to pay employees, you know, you don't have to pay employees now in, in fiat. You can, if you guys want to get paid in, in Bitcoin or in Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever it is, uh, because we are banking with Kraken, you can do that and I can pay you, no big deal. And another big thing is that uh, some of these places, you know, they can't use banks uh, because of their, uh, you know, because they are working in cryptocurrency. So now they can actually have a bank that they can actually bank with. It's the same thing in the marijuana industry. Marijuana industry, they can't use banks. They have to store everything cash heavy. So um, that's a dangerous situation for anybody uh, in, in that. So I will say that I think what is going to happen is that this is the first step to really changing the whole banking structure. And if we look at all the different things that are coming in place, I mean, who would have ever thought that the Federal Reserve would give a banking license to an exchange and they would let them custody different cryptocurrencies. They wouldn't allow them to lend them out. They had to have 100% reserves and it was, it was going to be super transparent and all the different things that were happening before, all the different, uh, I'm, Wells Fargo scandals, uh, you know, money laundering scandals we just talked about, those can not completely go away because we'll never get away. I mean, we'll never get rid of everything, right? But we can make it so transparent that these types of things just are going to be a fate of memory, hopefully. Now, hopefully I'm not uh, giving off too much hopium, but I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, I think it is, <laughs> I think it is one of those uh, big steps in the right direction. I think it could be a catalyst. And another big thing is, uh, so we have this over here, and then we have the other story about MicroStrategy, where the CEO, Michael Saylor, said, hey, we've got half a billion dollars, and that money is on fire because the Federal Reserve keeps printing money, and the dollar of the value just drops and drops and drops. So we're just sitting there, and we should just be throwing this money on the toilet. Where do we put it? Well, we're going to put it into the best performing asset in the last decade, which is Bitcoin. So if you have something like that, and businesses are like, well, I got a lot of money, uh, but I don't really understand these exchanges. And I don't really understand about using a nano ledger. And am I going to put uh, half a billion dollars in my nano ledger? Oh, well, now there's a, a place called Kraken and I can put all my money into it. And then I can, you know, invest into Bitcoin and then it'll probably, well, not probably, but it, it, will, it will go up as far as an asset. I like the sound of that. And last thing I will say is that my wife did say this. She goes, you know what? Um, Will they really do that? Because, I mean, I just, she said, I just looked at Bitcoin today. It's at 10400 It wasn't 11000 not too long ago. I'm like, yes, that is true. However, do you remember what it was in March? It was like $4,000. So people are cautious, but uh, they will also see a great value. And they also see where the tide is, is, is moving to, just like Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy, just like Fidelity Jill Assets, just like Paul Tudor Jones, just like all the rest of the big institutional players are seeing it. So... This could be a big thing, could be a catalyst. I believe 2021 is, is a good year. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And uh, that's it, let's, uh, let's jump back. Next up, Bitcoin ATM surpassed 10,000 worldwide, expert shares industry outlook. When I first read this article, I thought to myself, this is a fantastic business opportunity. But when you get into the weeds of it, you realize that uh, no, not so much. So what's going on here? So first up, the number of cryptocurrency ATMs has grown significantly, surpassing 10,000 last week. And this is all about perpetual motion. When you first gain traction, it takes a lot of work. But in business, once you gain that traction, that foothold, you just start to take off exponentially. And in this industry, it took roughly seven years to reach the point uh, where they installed uh, ATM or Bitcoin ATMs. And after the first three and a half years, they got a thousand active Bitcoin ATMs. Not too bad. But the three years after that, they got 9,000 ATMs. So a 9x increase. So again, first year, a lot of work. Our first three years, a lot of work. We only got a thousand ATMs. The next three years, 9,000 ATMs. And that's how pretty much all businesses go. It just takes a lot of work to get things going, but once it does, it just takes off like a rocket. 
CoinFlip CEO Daniel Polotsky has shared some insights into the Bitcoin ATM industry. He states with 10,000 machines placed globally, Bitcoin ATMs have been the go-to service for those participating in cash to crypto and also uh, for unbanked and underbanked. So if you cannot use a bank for whatever reason, either through geographical uh, location, either through legal process or even, or even through uh, whatever issue that you have, there is a uh, definitely a niche market or just a market for people in this sector who need to buy Bitcoin and they can do it cash ways through a Bitcoin ATM. He states his company is installing between 30 and 50 Bitcoin ATMs per week and they're on track to have 3,000 by the end of the year. Again, exponential growth. Here's what that looks like. That looks like they're doing the right thing. So there's two types here. Genesis Coin tops the list of Bitcoin ATM manufacturers with 3,500 followed by General Bytes and BitAxis, blah, blah, blah. So these are the people that make the actual ATMs. Then you have the operators, and they're the ones that buy up all these ATMs, and they do all the hard work. They do the installation, they do the reporting, they do all the registration, all that stuff. And the top 10 run about half of them, uh, but there's other ones down the line. So you got uh, CoinCloud, CoinFlip, Bitcoin of America, it's pretty good, Bitcoin of America, BitStop, Digital Mint, and, all, and so on and so forth. So I think it's a great business, but uh, here's where it gets interesting. Uh, Bitcoin ATMs have gained an edge over the competition within specific demographics. Due to the on-ramp's speed and ease of use, customers don't need to be tech-savvy to locate a machine, call a support rep, get the transaction in five minutes. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of people that don't really understand it. Uh, Coinbase, Kraken, Voyager, like, I don't get it. But everybody's using ATM, and it's a heck of a lot easier. Now, the problem with Bitcoin ATMs is that the transaction cost is a little bit higher, but some people will definitely pay that for an increased ease of use and also uh, increased privacy. Now, if you're going to buy a lot of Bitcoin and ATM, I don't see why you'd be hauling around 10,000 bucks, but maybe you do, and you put that in there, they're going to do a lot of KYC and AML type of stuff, and you're going to have to register it if you are one of those people who are purchasing. And also, it's a headache if you want to own one of these machines. So let's get into it. So first of all, just like how I work with Amazon, there are uh, manufacturers and distributors. Uh, I call them, I say, hey, I wanna purchase uh, whatever, however many units of whatever product they have. Sure, we'll give it to you. They ship it in, I buy everything, I take care of a lot of different uh, aspects, and I sell it for a little bit of an increased price. Same thing here, you've got manufacturers who are making it and operators. So if you wanna buy an ATM machine, uh, not too tough, just look for Genesis Coin, Genesis Coin Cryptocurrency, and the first thing that'll pop up will be this website, bitcoinatm.com. And um, you can just look through it right now and you can say, well, how much is it? Well, it's about 14.5 for one of these big guys, 73.80 for a slimmed down model, and only 4,500 for a wall mounted unit. So you're like, great, I can do that. Um, but here's where it gets, uh, where you have to really start to think about uh, the little minutia details. So the first thing I saw, which was interesting, was they asked the question, what's your knowledge of the regulatory landscape governing Bitcoin kiosks? Interesting question. Well, I would consider myself a novice. I have not considered the regulatory requirements. Advanced is I am aware of the regulatory implications. Or a pro is I have experiencing running a money service business or MSB or other regulated business. That's if you're a pro, sure. Another thing you gotta think about is this. Do you have a FinCEN, FinCEN BSA ID number or a Banking Secrecy Act ID number? What the heck is that? Well, there's a great website. It's called atmmarketplace.com and it breaks down what all that stuff is. So FinCEN or the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network considers a Bitcoin ATM operator to be a money service business. And all money service businesses have to register with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. This is easy, it takes about 45 minutes and uh, off you go. But once you register, you're obligated to comply with BSA. Among other things, uh, you gotta have a Bitcoin ATM operator to establish an anti-money laundering compliance program which is a written, written document that explains your overall plan to thwart money laundering. So you can do that. All you gotta do is get a lawyer who's very well uh, versed in all those things and they can write things off for you. Again, only takes money, but it's really about 
who you know. As part of your AML compliance program, you need to appoint a dedicated AML compliance officer. That's the person that's going to write up all these things and pretty much be responsible for everything you have to do with any money laundering act. Again, that could be anybody you want to, but they have to be well versed into it. You also have to maintain a superior reporting and record keeping capabilities to ensure you're collecting the appropriate information for all transactions. And lastly, or next to last, in terms of reporting, BSA requires you to monitor customer files. Uh, so anybody who spends over $10,000, you have to put in a transaction report. You also need to file a sus suspicious activity report for any transactions that might signify money laundering, tax evasion, or other criminal activities, which is kind of funny uh, because, you know, JP Morgan didn't do it. Deutsche Bank didn't do it. Sadie's got busted for money laundering, but you, the little guy, have to do it. That's hilarious, but that's how it works. Typically, a Bitcoin ATM operator will work with an outside consultant or a lawyer to create the compliance program. They will begin contracting with vendors who can provide the necessary services to comply with these, such as collecting information to run through the OFAC list. So again, all this stuff can be done. You know, all these things can be done. It's all about do you want to go through that uh, that hoopla. Now, I think it's a tremendous uh, time to be in this space. I see a lot of different things uh, popping off. If you've been around the channel, you know that I'm uh, pretty bullish on the whole space, but uh, I think it's all coming together right now. I will put this in the description. I personally will not be doing this, but I think it's a great business op opportunity for somebody out there who wants to take the bull by the horns. All right. Thanks for uh, uh, listening through the end. I really appreciate that. If you like these types of videos, two more is going to pop on your left and right. Not sure because uh, YouTube controls all that. And that is it for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.